Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, it was a night that provoked fury, concern and violent rebuttals. On New Year's Eve, more than 100 women were sexually assaulted in the German city of Cologne. Many of the attacks were said to be carried out by migrants. In the aftermath, the Birmingham Yardley MP, Jess Phillips, said that similar incidents could be described on Broad Street in Birmingham every week, where women abated and heckled. Her comments provoked a backlash, and the MP has since revealed that she was herself the victim of a sexual assault. Today, the Office for National Statistics released figures showing the highest ever number of sexual offences in a year recorded. In her first television interview since her controversial remarks, the Labour MP speaks frankly about the details of the sexual assaults against her. Cathy Newman began by asking her what she thought about the Met Police Commissioner's comments that they might stop automatically believing rape victims. I think that it's a shame that the tool that gets used by perpetrators and abusers the country over every day is to say nobody will believe you and I think it's unfortunate that today the Bernard Hogan Howe has confirmed that for a lot of victims. Do you have any sympathy with the fact that senior public figures like Lord Bramall, Lord Britton have their names really dragged through the mud and then the investigation was dropped? We believe in innocent till proven guilty in this country but there is no other crime where we wouldn't instantly believe the person coming forward. If a little old lady got mugged on the street, we wouldn't assume she was lying until it was proven that she wasn't lying. We would believe her, we would take the evidence and investigate, and that's what has to be the case. And of course, you've got your own personal experience of being a victim of sexual assault and not being believed. Tell us about that. The one incident that I spoke about in Parliament was one of many in my younger years that I could have spoken about where I was basically pinned up against the wall in a bar by a, uh, a bloke who was with a group of his mates. He stuck his hand up my skirt, inside my knickers, so I slapped him around the face. Um, and then I was thrown out of that particular bar by the security staff, even though I told them what was happening. Were you shocked that the bar staff didn't believe you and kicked you out? I was incensed, uh, <laughs> but no, I wasn't shocked. We get used to it throughout my childhood. There's been lots of incidents where men have pulled up in cars, asked me to get in and masturbated in front of me. I remember at school walking down, um, down the driveway of my school and a man standing in the park just exposing himself to me and all the girls at school. Like, it, it, beca it becomes part of something you shrug off. I don't feel like a victim. I don't feel now it's affected my life and I can't carry on. Obviously, I'm carrying on perfectly well. Um, but I do think that we've got to stop shrugging it off. We've got to start reporting it. And we will never, ever start reporting it until we are believed when we actually report it. Did you report any of these assaults to the police? Um, no, I mean, we ne I never made an official report to the police. I remember on one incident where a group of my, me and my friends were in a park um, where we live in Birmingham and um, a, a group of lads came over and ass assaulted one of the other lads we were with, beat him up and dragged one of my friends into a bush and sexually assaulted her quite badly, I mean really quite badly. And I remember we jumped out of the park and there was a police car going past and we tried to flag it down. They basically saw us as a bunch of drunk kids in a park and I know that things have got a lot better and police are dealing much better with reporting but if every woman who was groped on a night out this weekend called the police there's no way they would be able to manage to deal with that. What do you say to people who say that by getting drunk women are compromising their safety? What I say is are men compromising their own safety by drinking too much and the answer of course is no. Uh, we repeatedly blame the victim it's like, don't go out late at night, don't, don't go, always work in pairs, don't go get in a taxi unless it's marked. What I would like to say to the men and boys of the world is don't rape and sexually assault women. You've been talking about the number of women who have experienced what you've experienced. Um, new figures today appear to bear that out. There's, uh, uh, the number of sex offences is the highest ever recorded. Was that what you were trying to say in your question time appearance, that the UK shouldn't rest on its laurels? 
That is exactly what I'm trying to say, is that every weekend in the UK there will be hundreds and hundreds of people who are sexually assaulted and we shouldn't think that this is somehow something that's being perpetrated by other, by an, another group of people. It is perpetrated by, I'm, af I'm afraid to say, all groups of people, all ethnicities. There was criticism though, wasn't there, that white feminists such as yourself are not keen to confront the fact that some cultures uh, are less tolerant and less respectful of women. I, I can see why people would have laid that criticism against me. However, I think that what I will not let happen is for the far right to use the exploitation of vulnerable girls in this country and what happened in Cologne for their own ends when they've done absolutely nothing about sexual violence and the culture of sexual assault until it, f it fits their purpose. There was quite a backlash against what you said on Question Time. Did that surprise you? Um, on reflection, in hindsight, I can see why people were annoyed um, and why there is a, a lot of uh, backlash. But I think that it's surprising that we are sort of dehumanised as politicians and that, you know, every single word you say you have to be really, really careful of. I think that what I find unusual about it is the backlash is what turns politicians into line-driven automatons and I will always be weary in my life going forward of the things that I say and sometimes some people will say, well, that's a good thing, you learn a lesson and I can take that but eventually I will come out here and tell you what my party wants me to, you to tell me or tell you the thing that I want to say regardless of the question that you've asked. I, I will eventually get there, I'm sure. So you can see yourself adopting a bit of self-censorship? It's very, very tiring to deal with lots of people shouting at you and screaming at you. It, it becomes... it's not... It's not a great hardship. No one cries for the slightly upset MP. It's not, you know... It's not comparable to anyone with real trauma. It is tiring. Jess Fuller is speaking to Cathy.